Ah, yes, Rhodes Island elite operators. Because of the world rampant discrimination against the infected. It is necessary for Rhodes Island to have their own military forces. Acting as a security for their personnel and patients. And will use their paramilitary forces for things still associated with the infected. Like stopping reunion movement from invading the city of Lungman. Inside the paramilitary forces, there's a branch called Rhodes Island Elite Operator. They are some kind of special forces unit for Rhodes Island. The majority of the individuals in it is someone with an extraordinary combat skills. But some others have a unique skills that's not really suitable for combat. But still provide a big support for Rhodes Island engineering or medical department. It is said that an elite operator is the one that works harder than most. And has gained the trust of many Rhodes Island member. As a top ranking unit, it is stated that an elite operator can only be mobilized by Supreme Leader Amir, Kelsey and then us the doctor. Elite operators is always busy taking missions all across Terra. So they don't usually found in the landship. Probably the time where most of the elite OP assigned to the same mission is during Chernobog Lungman conflicts. Now you should get the idea of this Rhodes Island elite operator. So now let's take a look on each individual in this elite operator. Starting with Blaze. Blaze is the first playable elite operator in the game. Nicknamed Big Cat by her fellow elite op. She has a mysterious past, it is stated she's from Victoria. But with her Yan accent and the mysterious death of her father in that country. Blaze was implicated in a major incident in Yan. It's unclear how she joins Rhodes Island, but she must redact her birthday to avoid conflicts. Blaze is a longtime member of Rhodes Island. She's a frontline combatant in Ace's squad, and after two years, she is recommended to become one of the elite operator. She has a peak physical strength and combat skills. That she is even able to safely land from a very high places. And also has the unique arts technique to heat the air within a specified area. To the point she can manifest explosion. Because of her explosive arts, she's sometimes mistaken as a caster. Until people see the big chainsaw she wields. A custom made weapon designed by Mechanist, another Rhodes Elite Op. As stated by Mechanist, the chainsaw is difficult to make. As it is has to be durable and facilitates her arts technique. Not mention Blaze wanted some kind of extension for the chainsaw. Blaze is both reliable in a solo or in a team combat. She loves drinking heavy amount of alcohol beverages. And seems to be an easy going individual on most occasion. But always serious when it comes to the infected matters. And doesn't tolerate people who discriminate, or even have a slight resentment towards the infected. This is why she has a bitter relationship with Greythroat. But with Greythroat gradually understand the infected, their relationship is getting better. Next one on the list is another playable elite operator, Rosmontis. Hey wrong game. Rosmontis, nicknamed Kitten for a reason that doesn't need any explanation. She's a Colombian from a middle class family, and she has a brother. At one point, her parents passed away, ended up in orphanage. And eventually taken to Lucan Water Tank Laboratory. She and her brother become subject of an experiment. To create an infected that won't suffer from oropathy, to create exceptional arts user. Her brother was killed for the experiment, and they implemented an artificial organ to Rosmontis. It is believed that Rosmontis's brother consciousness is inside her brain. One thing led to another. Rosmontis destroyed the laboratory and ended up in Kelsey hand. Rosmontis condition is pretty complicated. She possessed some kind of telekinesis ability. Or it is said that there are invisible hands, that is the ghost of her brother. Because of her unstable mental condition, there's an incident that almost killed Rhodes Island medical team. But luckily, Logos, another Rayleigh operator, managed to calm her down. After that, there's a vote put up by Kelsey, along with senior caster and medical team. Deciding should Rosmontis be handled in Rhodes Island or not. At the end, only two people are against Rosmontis staying in the landship. Both are an elite op caster who know full well the destruction Rosmontis can do. 
But nevertheless, since the majority decided to take care of Montes in the landship, all of them will guide the young girl to use her arts and ease her mind. One thing led to another, she has gained the trust of her fellow operators, and can better control her arts. And one point, she becomes an elite operator. A part of an annihilation team where she can use her destructive arts to good use. Rosmontis takes part in Rhodes Island Chernobog infiltration. She believes that reunion is just a bad people that deserves nothing but death. But eventually realizes that people can still achieve peace despite the conflict. She now thinks of Rhodes Island as her new family, and will fight with them. Moving on to Ace story. Ace is a former member of Babel, the Rhodes Island predecessor. There's not much information regarding his ability. But he is believed to have an extraordinary physical strength. And have a powerful instinct and tactical acumen. Compared to other elite operator, Ace is the one who spend most of his time to train with inexperienced operators. And so he is favored by many. He also one of the few to regard us the doctor as a friend. He agreed to Amia's plan to rescue the doctor from Chernobog. Believing that we can guide Rhodes Island to better future. At the end, Ace sacrifices life to hold back to Lula and the reunion. So the doctor and the rest of the team can escape. Next one on the list is Scout. Like Ace, he is also a former member of Babel and stay with Rhodes Island as an elite op. Scout has an extraordinary marksmanship. He can move super fast, and is skilled in stealth mission. Even W admired Scout. She even say that Scout is the last stealth master of the Sarkaz. Scout is close with his fellow elite operator, and regards Doctor as a friend. And wishes that the Doctor would stop walking in the path of war. During the Chernobog rescue mission, Scout secretly making contact with W. He makes a deal with W that he will kill her mercenary group leader. So that the group will be out of Terrace's reach, and W will take charge. But in exchange she must secure the way out for the doctor. At the end, Scout was killed by Hodera and Inez. To keep their appearance with reunion. Next one is Outcast. A carefree Sancta who loves to use other people's story as her background. She is skilled with her shooting skill and able to kill multiple enemies in a single shot. She can tell the person's background and personality, just with their expression and how they speak. And often train other Sancta with their marksmanship on her free time. Outcast also participated in Chernobog infiltration along with other Elite Op. Providing Reckon for the team. Almost a year after the events of Reunion attack on Chernobog, Outcast is ready for her retirement, but decided to take one mission to investigate Hillock County, in the preparation for Rhodes Island entering Victoria. But a sudden uprising happened, causing many casualties. In the midst of the fighting, Outcast spotted an injured Reed, believing she's not the main villain, and she might be useful for Rhodes Island. She takes her to backpipe so she can bring her to safety. While Outcast stay back and fights the enemies alone. At the end she sacrifices herself to kill enemies elites. By shooting all of the six bullets in her gun. Which causes latter and no judgment to fall upon her. A bright light coming from the sky, burning Outcast and everything near her. Next up we have Misery. Sam Fisher of Arknights. Misery is an assault operator, who is stated to be a pessimist and gloomy operator. Is implied that he was once failed to persuade a peace treaty between two towns, and it ended in massacre. There's no clear information about his arts technique. But in the events of episode 10, he is believed to possess a space manipulation arts. Or illusion arts, where he can or make it seems like he control the space and manipulating an object's density. His abilities are still unclear, but without a doubt he is a skillful fighter. Even Blaze said he could wipe problems just by waving his hands. He is a good friend with Outcast, and her death angered him. And demanding Kelsey to make Rhodes Island enter Victoria as soon as possible. He is also the one who is responsible to bring back the trio of Abyssal Hunter. After the events in Salvinto, he then takes part in the events of episode 10. And is the one who discovered Horn's trail in Londinium. 
Moving on to the 4 exclusive operators and integrated strategies. Who recently just got their own voice. First is Pith, an A-lead caster operator of Rhodes Island. Not much known about her. Besides the fact that she usually coach other casters such as Lava. And with Logos, she's also the one who is against Rosmontis staying in Rhodes Island. Next one is Sharp. An elite guard operator, and Aurora team captain. He was once worked in Sargon Royal Court, working as a guard or something alike. And also used the similar swordsmanship used by them. In the Break the Ice event, he accompanied the Doctor to Kaharag as a bodyguard. At one point he fought with the Black Knight, or three times Kazim Yesh Major winner. And he managed to put a good fight with her. Next up is Tomai. An elite sniper operator. His first debut in the story is in the R6 event. Where he lead a rescue team to save Ranger, Tachanka and the others. He can shoot multiple arrow to hit the enemies. And even hit a small target like an Origini Utens. He is also the one who is responsible to take Manticore to Rhodes Island. In one mission he spotted an unconscious Manticore in Sargon Desert. He bandaged her wounds and give her some supplies, and left her near a village. But unexpectedly Manticore follows him to his transport. Seeing her condition is worse than he thought, he takes her to Rhodes Island for treatment. Next one on the list is Touch. Touch is a medical personnel that possessed a very unique ability. In the Mir Light event epilogue, she helped the Doctor, Gravel and Hibiscus against Armilus Union. She can use her arts to turn the enemy arrow into a branch. And can use healing arts to keep gravel in a prime condition. Despite she's taking a lot of hits. She said she wouldn't meddling in an off mission matters. But if Rhodes Island personnel is in danger, she won't hesitate to interfere. Touch also vote yes for Osmontis staying in Rhodes Island. And she's the one who speculates about her memory condition. Moving to the elite operators who still don't have their sprite until now. First is Logos, he is pretty common to be mentioned in the story. A great banshee successor who is skilled with ancient arts since born. In the year of 1084, Logos is still a young boy, and is intended to be a part of Babel. By the time Ark Knight's main storyline take place. He probably not much older than Amia, or just turned 20. He is described as a crazed and skillful caster. In the Rewinding Breeze story. He is a very skillful caster that he can one-shot Mudrick Golem. And also save Mudrick and her team from Lithania Witch King's loyalist. He has the ability to make everything that he writes become some sort of arts. So anyone who reads it will result in them bleeding from their eyes and die. Many junior caster admired him. And although he might sound like a cold person. But he knows how to goof around. Among other elite op, he is probably the one who rarely present in the landship. It is stated that he is interested more with matters in Kazdal. Though when he is in the landship, he took his time training other junior caster. And is the one who calmed Rosmontis when she first arrived in the landship. He and Pith then voted against Rosmontis staying in Rhodes Island. But eventually agreed to guide the young girl as a caster. Moving on to another elite operator Mantra. Mantra is the captain of Rhodes Island 3rd Special Squad, and Elysium captain. She is implied to be a cool and quiet person. Though Elysium sees her as a scary person who often smacks him up. But he truly respect her as she was once saved his life. It's unclear what special ability that Mantra has. But she can make full use of her ability when Elysium is around. Perhaps a communication related arts technique. And Mantra often take on a solo mission because of that ability. She, Elysium and her squad also takes part in Chernobog infiltration. Moving on, we got Radian. We first see her also in Chernobog infiltration. Described as someone who has a warmth and strong motherly vibe. Loved by many young operators like Supreme Leader Amia and Rosmontis. Though some adults find her nice attitude annoying. She is the leader of the Reckon team and a communication specialist. She doesn't excel in combat like most daily top. But makes it up with her unreplaceable skill at maintaining communication in battle. Next up is Mechanist, he is noted to be good at designing and fixing things. 
He and Ace trained Blaze before she becomes an elite op. And is the one who designed her chainsaw. Mechanist can be very focused with his work, to the point he would stay up all night. And his workbench double as his bed. After Chernobog incident, it is implied that he can't stand seeing scout charred weapon. Last one on the list, an elite operator called White Smith. As far as I know she is only mentioned in the furniture description. And it isn't clear how she's doing now. Described as being so fast that not even death could catch her. Until she did finally slow down. Well, if she ever appears in the story, prepare for the worse. This is definitely a death flag. Rhodes Island Elite Operator sure is interesting. I hope we'll get new Elite Operator as the playable characters. That should be all. Adios.